very much, Stephen, and thank you for inviting me to take part in this. I'm born in Hungary, so we're kind of part of the package in some ways, you know. We were the provinces, whereas Vienna was, I think, where we was the great urban capital, and Hungarians have always felt slightly provincial compared to the Austrians. I picked uh, Schnitzler for Ver Schnitzler? Yes. Um, I picked him for various reasons, because A, he is fascinating, um, fascinating in in that he's incredibly perceptive, very, very ironic. Um, he seems to be wholly representative, actually, of that time in many ways, of the attitudes of that time. Uh, born in 1862, dies in 1930. Well, I'm not going to go through um, all of that. I've, re I've got two poems. One's um, a, a dozen little bits, and one's just a set of couplets. I'll read the one which is a dozen little bits first. Um, it's called Illicit. A dream story. I'm reading it from here because I've just got used to carrying this in my pocket. There's a very nice book which has been put together there. It refers to, I suppose, it refers to three kind of works by Schnitzler. There's a dream story, of course, you know, which you, some people already know is a not very good film, Eyes Wide Shut. Um, and then you've got um, La Ronde. Um, and then there's this other thing which I rather liked, which is um, a short story called Lieutenant Gustl. But the whole thing is kind of mixed up together, and what you've got is 12 little poemlets of six lines each. The mouth is cruel, but the eyes are open. The eyes drink as the mouth speaks. The hands are busying themselves elsewhere. This is the way things happen. This is the way a morning breaks. This is night. Here is the ambient air. Walking at night, you catch a glimpse of calf, and suddenly you are away, riding a carriage to the enchanted mansion with its crew of phantoms. You have failed at marriage. You have to construct another you to contend with. You are not your better half. Who has not dreamt of a realm beyond the provisional? A nether region where things remain suspended forever. You wake in the morning, and it's there before you, an ache that is not purely light, where nothing sings, where you touch the world, and it doesn't respond. Your cupidity betrays you with its puns. You go out with a sabre, fearing guns. Your pride is flagging, whip it into shape. You contemplate a courtship, but it's rape. You are both your own self and a slip, in language, a tongue without a lip. You can turn the form around and see it from all angles. It seems perfect, does it not? You can contain your senses in it. What is bothering you now? What is it? It won't let you sleep. You are hot. It is normal. Touch yourself. You've earned it. We have delved ever deeper into the psyche. Consider the evidence this is a brittle time. The pavement is cracking, the walls fragile. You have no heart to speak of. Do you insist on talking of the heart? Do you sincerely imagine that there is pavement under your feet? Isn't it time to reconsider? The place goes mad as language. What is that noise you keep hearing? Are people talking? Is a cafe a hubbub of conversation? Is there a cliché emerging from your mouth? What is that bubble you keep blowing? The speech that annoys and delights you? Are you well? Are you in trouble? Everyone is suddenly desirable. The opposite sex is something you dreamt up when you were unwell one steamy night. The sexual engine is always cruising the streets. It simply requires fuel. You watch your fingers move and your mind stray down a blind alley. It's not your fault, it's complex. I'm through with courtesy, he declared, and made a rough move which she shut off with a sweep of her elegant hand. She touched him somewhere. She should take off that mask. He had played his hand, now let her play hers. It was unfair having to play this game while half asleep. Act without passion. 
Move your cold desire into gear. Be vulnerable to the moon or what stands in for moon. Betray the confidence you promised to keep. Trust the finger sense that negotiates both ice and fire. Let your eyes wander, but keep your mouth shut. Lie down on that couch and speak to me. Tell me anything you want. I'm listening. You don't know me, nor do I need your name. Let your mind roam the feral dark. Feel free to swear. Is that your sweat glistening in the dark? Is that shadow there your shame? It's time to pack away the uniform you've been wearing. Are you a medical man? Is that your rank? Are those your vital organs? This is your city. Here is the street plan of your desire. Here is the fierce storm of passion you've been saving. Invent a title. And this is the mottos from Schnitzel. Of course, Schnitzel was very much... I mean, Laurent was uh, criticised as pornography in its time. And that's about sex, as is the dream. Um, and it's very perceptive about these things. It's very cruel about these things. It's very ironic about these things. And this is just a set of ten little two-line mottos from Schnitzler. One. Talking is negotiation. Strike the deal and go your way. Leave no grounds for appeal. Two. Innocence is a form of nagging. Lose the pathos, but be careful what you choose. Three, sweet young bodies. See how they revolve in the firmament, zoom in and dissolve. Cruelty is inevitable in the end. A lover once can never be a friend. What goes around comes around, then goes. The other side of your face, your eyes. That knows. Cynical? Me? Is that my eyebrow raised? Certainly not. It's just me looking dazed. I'm on number seven, by the way. Would you prefer desire or call it lust? I call it vertigo or plain disgust. Eight? Let's break up the line. Let us instead stroll around the park and talk about your soul. I prefer a motto to a top hat. I prefer an indiscretion. Leather, perhaps. Or fur. I'm going to sleep. I'm off to dream the light inside my head, where it is never night. Thank you for listening.